EMG question of the day. The currently accepted explanation for the generation of positive sharp waves in denervated muscle fibers stricken by a process producing dash N effect is that the action potential hyperpolarization phase does not contribute to the formation of the wave. A. Compressed. B. Sealed. To direct us in the process of answering this question, let's start by looking at some facts and a few rules. We will start with a rule that applies to all situations when dealing with extracellular expression of intracellular action potentials in muscle fibers. We will refer to this rule as the golden rule. This rule states that intracellular elements contribute to extracellular recorded waveforms in direct proportion to the rate of voltage change per unit of time of the intracellular action potential. This means that elements of the intracellular action potential dominated by quick changes in voltage contribute exponentially to the extracellular waveform formation, whereas those elements with intracellular action potential dominated by very slow changes in voltage per unit of time do not contribute to extracellular wave formation. We will follow the golden rule with two general facts. Fact number one, electrode tissue adverse interaction consists of blocking the progression of muscle fiber action potentials. And the second one, the two processes that can produce blocking of muscle fiber action potentials are named compressed end effect and sealed end effect. Now we will talk about particulars of each of these processes. First about sealed end effect and we will mention two sealed end effect facts. The first one is that sealed end effect produces positive sharp waves in innervated and denervated muscle fibers. The second one is that the tissue affected by the seal N effect is unable to sustain ionic current, that is the current that requires functional voltage gated channels including sodium and potassium or calcium activated potassium channel nor to sustain capacitance current, the current that relies on the repulsion of similar charges across intact cell membrane, and as such does not require gated channels. We will also mention two rules that govern the configuration of positive sharp waves due to sealed end effect. Rule number one, the sealed end effect causes each dipole to fade independently, and sealed end effect rule number two, only quadruples with high rate of voltage change per unit of time contribute to the waveform. This last rule is basically a reiteration of the golden rule, but I added it here because it has a special importance when dealing with sealed end effect. Now we will go through the same process for compressed end effect. First two facts. The first one, unlike sealed end effect, compressed end effect only produces positive sharp waves in denervated muscle fiber. And the second, the segment of muscle fiber affected by the compressive end effect is unable to sustain ionic current which implies sodium and potassium voltage gated channel dysfunction or calcium activated potassium channel dysfunction but is able to sustain capacitance current. Now we will talk about two rules governing compressed effect. Number one rule, leading dipoles capacitance current enhances upon entering the affected area and compressed end effect rule number two, quadruple entering an area affected by the compressed end effect collapses in unison. The application of these rules will become apparent to you in the next few minutes. For now, I will use a few of the facts to build a simple table which will help us navigate through our discussion. This is the table. It emphasizes that electro tissue adverse interaction produces blocking. That there are two types of blocking mechanism that seal and effect when present in innervated or denervated muscle fibers produces morphologically positive sharp waves and that the other mechanism producing blocking of the muscle action potential in muscle fibers compressed and effect only when it involves denervated muscle fibers produces morphologically positive sharp waves. So now let's actually illustrate how seal and effect in muscle fibers produces morphologically positive sharp waves. In this frame I have have represented an intracellular action potential in an innervated muscle fiber. The arrowhead indicates the direction of the advancement of the action potential. I have now illustrated a line representation of a quadrupole. The quadrupole 
is the extracellular representation of an intracellular action potential in an innervated muscle fiber. Notice that the size of the signs of the leading dipole are bigger and closer to each other than the signs in the trailing dipole. I did so to indicate that the magnitude of the extracellular waveform associated with the leading dipole is bigger than the magnitude of the extracellular waveform associated with the trailing dipole. This is so because the time course of the leading dipole representing the polarization is about one millisecond, whereas the repolarization has a time course of about four milliseconds. And as you know, by the application of the golden rule, elements contributing to extracellular waveform according to the rate of voltage change per unit of time of the intracellular action potential. In the next frame, I will do three things. One, to represent the quadrupole in triangular design. Two, incorporate the electrical elements involved in the generation of a quadrupole. And three, use red arrows to indicate the direction of the flow of positive charges. We will use this illustration to show how morphologically positive sharp waves are created when an innervated muscle fiber is involved by an adverse event producing a seal in effect. So let's start building the illustration. The aqua line traces the polarization. The magenta line repolarization. I have now represented the quadrupole as a triangle formed by two right angle triangles. The aqua right angle triangle represents the polarization and the magenta one repolarization. I have now added two little structures, each representing a patch of membrane and a voltage gated sodium channel. They are wild voltage gated sodium channels. Each of these structures has a red arrow. The arrow points towards the intracellular space. They indicate the direction of the flow of positive charges that produces the ionic current that forms the sink. We have purposely omitted potassium and chloride channels required for repolarization because in this model and for this explanation, their omission do not modify the results. Now I have added two figures representing two patches of membrane flanking the sink of the quadrupole. Each of the patches has an arrow that indicates the direction of the flow of positive charges. They flow towards the extracellular space, producing capacitance current. These two just added figures represent the sources of the quadrupole. Now, in order to display the formation of the waveform, it is necessary to flip the orientation of the illustration in the direction of the twisted arrow which I have done here. The reason for this twist will become obvious in the next few seconds. Now we actually trace how a morphologically positive sharp wave develops as the consequence of CLN effect in innervated muscle fibers. In this new frame, the interrupted line is the boundary between an area dominated by the CLN effect and the innervated muscle fiber. In this frame, I am adding a needle in the area dominated by the seal N effect close to the boundary. Time will be represented in two directions. Time will progress in the direction indicated by the arrow for the extracellular representation of the quadrupole that will be illustrated on this side of the frame. Time for waveform formation will be illustrated on the other side of the interrupted line will be represented advancing to the right. Waveform will be represented with negativity up and positivity down. In this frame, you can see represented a quadrupole. At this time, the quadrupole is too far from the electrode to influence the waveform. Hence, the tracing is indicating that the activity is running at baseline. Now, the quadrupole has advanced towards the electrode. Upon arrival of the quadrupole to the border area, the quadrupole will produce a positive deviation in the waveform because the positive charge of the leading dipole is now in the recording field of the electrode. Now we will apply seal in effect rule number one, which states that each dipole fades independently. So as the leading dipole begins to fade, as indicated by the decreased size of the signs and the truncated aqua triangle, the waveform becomes less positive. Now the leading dipole has dissipated and the sink of the trailing dipole gets closer to the needle. The waveform will record a negativity. This is the consequence of the seal N effect rule number one, which states that each dipole fades independently. Then the trailing dipole starts to dissipate just as the leading dipole did. Notice that the signs and the magenta elements are smaller 
than they were previously. The consequence of the dissipation of the trailing dipole is that the waveform becomes less negative turning towards the baseline. Further reduction of the trailing dipole then takes place as expressed by the tiny signs and the reduction in the size of the magenta element. At this point, the reduction is such that the golden rule applies, and so the reduced trailing dipole charges are no longer sufficient to be captured by the electrode and the waveform returns to baseline as you can see here. So we have explained how sealed end effect in innervated muscle fibers produces morphologically positive chap waves. Now let's look at how sealed end effect in denervated fibers produces morphologically positive chap waves. In this frame you can see a representation of an intracellular muscle fiber action potential in a denervated fiber. This segment of the potential between the interrupted lines is referred to as the depolarization phase. Here I have introduced a quadrupole representation of the depolarization phase. In it I want you to notice the same sort of features we mentioned when discussing the action potential in seal and effect in innervated muscle fibers. The size of the signs used to indicate positivity and negativity in the leading dipole are larger and closer to each other than those used for the trailing dipole. This indicates that the time course of the trailing dipole is longer than the time course of the leading dipole, thus illustrating that the trailing dipole has a slower range of voltage change per unit of time than the leading dipole. Now let's look at the components of the depolarizing phase more closely. The aqua line introduced traces depolarization. The magenta line added traces repolarization. Notice that despite this portion of the intracellular action potential in the denervated muscle fiber being referred to as depolarization phase, it includes depolarization and repolarization. Now I will enlarge this segment as you can see while maintaining the size of the signs and introduce the triangular representation of depolarization phase matching the colors of the lines as we did before. When talking about action potential in reference to seal and effect in innervated muscle fibers. In this frame I have added the elements involved in the generation of ionic currents forming the sink inside the parentheses. They are non-wild type voltage gated sodium channels. Those involved in the generation of capacitance current forming the source and the arrows indicating the flow of positive charges. As you can see, so far this illustration is the same as the one we used before when describing the action potential in reference to the seal and effect in innervated muscle fibers. Now I want you to shift your attention to the curvy line. This segment is called the hyperpolarization phase. Now I have added the symbols corresponding to this segment. Again, I would like you to notice the size of the signs. Notice that the signs for the leading dipole are very small and those for the trailing dipole are tiny. Now I will illustrate the triangular design of the quadrupole corresponding to the hyperpolarization phase. But before, I like to point out that the hyperpolarization phase has two segments. The green line just added traces the segment of the hyperpolarization phase called hyperpolarization. The yellow line traces the segment of the hyperpolarization phase called repolarization. I have now represented both segments using a triangle in a similar fashion as we did for the polarization phase but with the corresponding colors. Notice that we are now representing the intracellular action potential as an octopole. Now we have added the representation of the ionic current but notice that the color of the channels are different, indicating that they are potassium and not sodium channels involved in the depolarization phase. And also notice that the arrow are pointing up towards the extracellular space, indicating that the positive charges are traveling out of the cell, thus making the extracellular space more positive. This is reflected by the positive signs just added in this frame, creating the source being at the middle of the quadrupole. The reason that only potassium channels, which by the way are calcium activated channels according to some authors or non-wild voltage gated channels according to others. They are illustrated here following the same principle used to only represent voltage gated channels during the polarization phase. They suffice to explain the functioning of the model. I have now added the segment of membrane involved in the capacitance current. Notice that they move positive charges into the cell 
thus creating a sink and making the extracellular space less positive, thus negative. Notice that in the trailing quadruple, the sinks are flanking the sources. The direction of progression of the action potential is to the left. So we will flip the illustration. Now we have the model in the right direction to illustrate how morphologically positive sharp waves develop as the consequence of seal N effect in denervated muscle fibers. In this frame, the interrupted line is the boundary between the seal area and the denervated fiber. Time will be represented as advancing downwards for extracellular action potential illustration and as advancing to the right for waveform formation. I will not display these arrows in future frames. At this time, the octopole is too far from the electrode to influence the waveform. Hence, the tracing will be at baseline. As the octopole approaches and reaches the recording field of the electrode, the waveform reaches its maximal positivity. Then, the first seal in effect rule applies. Each dipole fades independently, and the leading dipole of the leading quadrupole begins to fade. Notice the smaller and closer to each other signs representing the leading dipole of the leading quadruple compared to the one above. As the result, the wave become less positive as you see in this frame. Then the negativity of the trailing dipole becomes closest to the electrode and the wave reaches its maximal negativity. The negativity will be less than the previous positivity because the trailing dipole is less compact than the leading dipole. Then the trailing dipole begins to dissipate and the wave is driven towards the baseline. Then the trailing dipole fades even more. The golden rule applies. Elements contribute to extracellular waveform according to the rate of voltage change per unit of time. And since at this time, the rate of voltage change per unit of time is very low, the tracing reaches baseline. Since it is not affected by the low magnitude of the field created by such a dissipated trailing dipole. Once the leading quadruple fades completely, it is the trailing quadruple that reaches the recording area of the electrode. And the second seal in effect rule comes into play, which states that only quadruple with high rate of voltage change per unit of time contribute to the waveform. So the tracing remains at baseline because of the low magnitude of the trailing quadruple does not register. So we have looked at how the seal in effect in denervated fibers produces morphologically positive sharp waves. Now let's look at how compressed in effect in denervated fibers produces morphologically positive sharp waves. Since we will be talking about denervated muscle fibers, we can use the same representation of the extracellular potential we used in the previous section, that is the octopole. So we can jump immediately to talk about the formation of a morphologically positive sharp wave in denervated muscle fibers afflicted by compressed N effect. In this new frame, the interrupted line is the boundary between the compressed N effect area and the not compressed denervated muscle fiber. Time will be represented as advancing downwards for the progression of the octopole and as advancing to the right for waveform formation. I will not display the arrows in future flames. At this time, the octopole is too far from the electrode to influence the waveform, so the tracing is at baseline. When the leading dipole of the leading quadrupole comes in the recording field of the electrode, the tracing turns positive. Then the leading dipole capacitance current generated positivity enters the compressed area and the first rule of compressed N effect comes to play. Leading dipoles capacitance current enhances upon entering the affected area. So as you can see, the positive sign is bigger and as the consequence, the tracing becomes more positive, as you can see. Now we make use of compressed N effect rule number two, which states that quadruple contributing to waveform in cases of compressed N effect collapses in unison. This is represented in this frame by the smaller size of the leading quadrupole and their signs. Hence, the wave become less positive. Then the leading quadrupole dissipates further. So as dictated by the golden rule, that is the relation between rate of voltage change per unit of time, here reflected by the smaller representation of the leading quadrupole and the smaller sign. So once the leading quadrupole reaches this minimal magnitude, it fails to generate a recordable electrical field and the wave returns to baseline. With the disappearance of the leading quadrupole, the trailing quadrupole abuts the affected zone 
and comes in contact with the recording area of the electrode. And again, applying the general rule, the wave will only be influenced if the magnitude of the field generated is sufficient, and in this case it is not. Therefore, the wave will not change in amplitude, but when the capacitance negativity advances into the affected area, as shown in this frame, as dictated by compressed end effect rule number one, the leading dipole capacitance current is enhanced. Notice that the negative sign is bigger than before. This event will produce a negativity in the waveform. Then as the trailing quadruple fades and the capacitance current is no longer strong enough to impact the electrode, the waveform returns to baseline. So now that we have seen how compressed end effect in denervated fibers produces morphologically positive sharp wave, we are ready to answer the question. And the answer to this question is B. Thank you very much for your attention.